We're here with the future car, or the future motorcycle, if you want to call it that. Dan, what are we looking at here? We're looking at the future transportation. This is a C1. It's a fully enclosed, self-bouncing uh, electric motorcycle. Basically, it takes the safety and the comfort of a car and marries that with the romance and the efficiency of a motorcycle. And the gyroscopes? Do you want to yeah. talk about those? They're very powerful, but safe. Um, they output around 1,300 foot-pounds of torque. You would really need a baby elephant to knock the vehicle over. Mm -hmm. The motorcycle is more likely to skid and scoot over, right. act like a real car, um, than just like you know tip over and throw your rider. Mm -hmm. um, that's really the big advantage that we have over any two-wheeled uh, motorcycle. How about range on the thing? We're looking at around uh, 200 miles uh, per charge. It costs you $1 per charge. Uh, zero to 60 in six seconds, 120 mile an hour top speed. Uh, so very highly capable. Uh, you can lane split in this vehicle. Uh, you can basically s cut your commute time in half. So there's a lot of concerns with a lot of clean tech companies now. Um, yeah. Tesla obviously has, has come in under fire. Um, others as well. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you guys are under a million dollars in funding. How are you trying to convince investors that this is indeed the future, mm -hmm. you guys are the company to, be, to invest in? There are you know, several risks mm -hmm. in any startup. Uh, you know, one is uh, your market liability or your market risk and their technical risk. For us, we have a manufacturing and a scaling risk as well. Um, we've already de-risked the first two uh, under a million dollars. Uh, we're at the same place that Tesla was at. Uh, basically right after their A round of funding, mm -hmm. so after 700, uh, 7.5 right. million. And our technology and our patents are actually uh, a lot more defensible. So we're here with the actual working prototype. Dan, walk us through what's going on here with this thing. This is our um, center hub steering, uh, kind of a front wheel motor. Um, this is a unibody chassis that we actually built here in house. So we saved around 200, $2.3 million uh, making this by hand. So when can we see one of these on the street? We're going to do a small production run of 10 in uh, the end of 2013. Mm -hmm. And for a larger scale production, we're probably looking at uh, mid or late 2014. And these will be built in the U.S.? Yeah, built in the United States. Our final assembly in the United States, uh, you know, have a supply chain, international supply chain. Right. And uh, yeah, made here and hopefully in San Francisco. So you have a design background. You were an auto mechanic at one point. Eventually went to design school. Yeah. Tell me what the what your influences were in terms of developing this, this prototype. I decided to build the Land Rover or the perfect SUV. I had an accident where uh, I was almost crushed by one of the vehicles, um, and uh, I was lucky to survive. And, but it, you know, after a 500-pound chassis nearly crushes you, uh, you kind of start, take a step back and think, why the hell am I doing this? 70% of most people uh, drive alone, so that's 4,000 pounds uh, transporting you know, 120, 150 pound person. I thought, why not make a two-wheeler? And if you can make it self-balancing and have it safe like a car, uh, you know, I think we had a huge winner, not just in the States, um, but also you know, overseas, like in India and China and Europe. So Lit Motors is your first company. But tell me how hard it is in terms of disrupting what's a very conservative automotive industry. I did a lot of research uh, looking at the urban planning side, the manufacturing side, um, you know, uh, design, uh, the product logics, um, and also, you know, so I've been learning the business for the last couple of years. The culmination of all those disciplines uh, really actually create something that's truly disruptive. I don't know what else I'd be doing if it wasn't for this. Um, this is probably what I was born to, to do.